Today we're actually going to try and win some games defending the convoy, trying to escort them to their desired endpoint on the map. It's pretty difficult, as we've talked about previously. We haven't played this game mode for a bit, but last time we did, I wanted to discuss a little bit about the issues with this game mode and how difficult it is for the team trying to escort these ships to their end destination. It really comes down to you're forced to be pushing into the enemy's territory and they can just be set up to receive you. And that is essentially the whole point behind every competitive match <laughs> I've ever played. Um, <laughs> it's really hard to push in. That's the whole idea, right? So in Kings of the Sea, Clan Battles, Supremacy League back in the day, uh, the idea was get enough of a cap and points lead that the enemy team was forced to push into you late game. And that generally would give you a win. So, when we have a game mode where one team is essentially forced to do that every time, uh, it leads to some imbalance, especially when the objective is killable. It's just destroy the Liberty ships and you win the game as the team attacking the convoy. So it's a little tricky, and as the team that's trying to defend this convoy, we need to play a little bit different. That's kind of the whole idea here, maybe, is it's forcing people out of their comfort zone, forcing them to push in, make some more aggressive plays, try and catch the enemy team off guard, find some good crossfires, that kind of thing, to at least try to make some space for these Liberty ships. On this Two Brothers map, um, the ships take a really long time to get over to our flank, so I'm okay with playing a little more passive at the start, as you can see here. Smoke up, start farming. Jinan is, of course, excellent in this game mode. The sheer amount of torpedoes combined with the smoke and HE DPM, it's pretty nice, honestly, in this game mode. Very, very scary when you're the one attacking the convoy. The torpedoes do insane amounts of damage to a team that's forced to push into you. The other nice thing is the armor, but uh, we'll be seeing that in a little bit. So the idea here really is try to help our DDs push up as aggressively as possible, which they are. They're actually pushing very aggressively, which is great for us, and that allows us to come in behind and hopefully support them. We need to keep them alive as much as we can to take as much ground as we possibly can. The only real way to defend these convoys is to prevent them from being seen altogether. So destroying any of the enemy destroyers, submarines, anything that can spot very easily is going to be crucial. So this submarine, pretty scary target to be rushing towards considering how powerful shotgunning is in the game. But we gotta go for it. This is a, this is a full send kind of game mode. <laughs> Especially when there's a Montana here as well. But the GNN's somewhat maneuverable, we're not detected right now, and we do have that emergency smoke if we do get ourselves into some serious issues. A heal is also here, uh, I always enjoy having a heal on cruisers, for this very reason, it allows you to play aggressive and take some damage early without really sacrificing your late game uh, power level. Although this does assume we're not going to get one-shotted. You're not very good in the late game if you've been dev struck, of course. Uh, so getting close to a Montana here, a little scary, but crucially, Montana has 406mm guns, pretty low caliber at tier 10 these days, and Jinan actually has a 32mm upper belt, and that's going to protect us against his shells if we are able to angle properly. We'll try and hit this Bilal, but it's actually been taken out by our teammates before we actually have the opportunity to drop depth charges or really get much damage in on him. And now we're stuck face to face five kilometers from a Montana. <laughs> if you're pushing in a light cruiser or really any ship, this is bound to happen sometimes. And our torpedo reload booster here is gonna allow us to have a few more torpedoes, which are gonna come in clutch here as we already used our salvo. One of the main reasons Jinan is so good here. And the Montana, well, he hits our 32 millimeter be upper belt. And that's why he did exactly zero damage to us. Um, yeah, okay, he gets a little more, and then the uh, Mecklenburg actually chimes in across the map. But it's not enough to take us out. That's one of the reasons that Jinan, and especially Austin, which is what this hull is based off of, are pretty ridiculous at close ranges. If you haven't checked it out, go check out the armor viewer, and uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. It's pretty crazy to have this level of close range armor as a light cruiser, especially one with this many torpedoes. Now we certainly had a choice to make there after killing that Montana. Do we go back and try and defend our convoy ships as they're pushing forward? 
or do we try and take this end zone? Because we do need to control this end area of the map. Otherwise, the enemy team can just kill the convoy ships right as they're about to enter it. Uh, but the other thing is, this is a very easy map to push around into the enemy's spawn. So the enemy team, taking the one, two, three, four lines, could have pushed our spawn and killed all of our convoy ships while we were here trying to secure the uh, end point, as it were. And I've done that to win games on this map before <laughs> as the attacking team, the ones trying to sink the convoy. So a little bit awkward, but in this case, the enemy team has decided to come back to try and fight for this end point. So we'll just kind of hang out here. Again, trying to take out some of these DDs, all the while trying not to get ourselves killed. That Vermont at pretty close range was pretty spooky, as well as the Mecklenburg. That's why we're playing a little bit further back. Um, but the torpedoes here should help us against this Mecklenburg. And we pretty much have this end zone under our control now, which feels really, really good. It's... <laughs> Not easy to win this game mode. I do think the team that's attacking, trying to sink the convoy, is definitely favored in this. Um, I suppose I haven't played it a ton yet, not compared to random battles or ranked battles. Um, but you guys will have to let me know how you're feeling about it. It certainly is a little more one-sided than I would like, personally. It's one of the reasons I really enjoyed the... Um, airship escort game mode very evenly matched because you're both escorting uh, an immune uh, airship and you're both forced to push in a very similar way it's very enjoyable perhaps a game mode like this with convoy could have been great with an asymmetric battle mode i saw some people suggesting that in the comments of the last video and i agree i think that would be awesome uh, asymmetric battle here with these uh, convoy ships might do it although we did manage to win this one, so maybe it's not quite as imbalanced, but uh, it certainly helped that the enemy team there fought us for that end point. That's the key there. They didn't just go after our convoy ships. because so we do need to protect where they are going and try and keep them alive. In this next one, we're going to play a destroyer, and one that I've kind of spec'd for torpedoes. So sometimes that's a bit of an issue when you need to take on enemy destroyers, right? We're going to be very good against cruisers and battleships here, Yu Yang. Deepwater Torps, pretty amazing. But on this flank, we're the one leading the charge. We're the one kind of trying to find the enemy destroyers, spotting, that kind of thing. That's a little tricky if we're not running a gun build. However, the enemy Yu Yang pops up, and that means we're in a pretty even fight. Even if he does go a full gun build, Yu Yang's really not that strong with guns these days, thanks to the nerfs that it's received a very long time ago, admittedly. But uh, the gun power is not that amazing. He actually decides not to open up on us, so we'll pop our smoke to go dark here, as, as he does as well. That doesn't leave us in a smoke disadvantage. It's one of the main things you need to be worrying about as a destroyer. If you can force the enemy DD to pop their smoke, and you don't have to pop yours, that means in the next engagement you have a massive advantage. It allows you to take an engagement, start opening up. If they open up on you, you get to pop your smoke because you still have it available to you. And uh, hopefully you're in a position where your teammates will do the spotting for you and you'll get a bunch of free damage in. Like this, for example. The Yu Yang is going to use his smoke here, I believe, and we're going to try and save ours. It's a really good way to get a bit of an advantage in later fights. However, it's not really worth it if you do take a ton of damage to the enemy ships that are around. So that's why I popped my smoke earlier on. I wasn't exactly sure who was around. We'll collect the Kerr first with those deep water torps, so as we're launched a little earlier. And here, maybe a little too greedy. We are definitely trying to dodge the uh, Ohio here and the Kerr first shots and secondaries. But if we're able to do this properly, I do think we'll have a good shot in on this Yu Yang in the next engagement. Going dark here, and now we're going to just charge at him. Uh, you can see our team has kind of lost the other flanks, so <laughs> it's very, very, very important that we protect these two convoy ships here on this flank. That's kind of our uh, late game win condition here because, well, the far right side is totally dead and the midships are, well, they're about to be dead. <laughs> so we're in a little bit of pressure here. Again, trying to push as aggressively as we can, trying to prevent spotting. That is the idea here, I think. You just need to prevent the enemy team from spotting your ships that you're trying to escort. And that's really the best way to keep them alive. They're not great at dodging torps, and they kind of pop smoke for one another, but even then, they still just W key into the enemy team. That's how they've been programmed. So charging this smoke here, we actually don't have to worry about torpedoes. 
Ideally, I'd like to stall this destroyer engagement until the Ohio is dead. It's pretty scary to fight a DD here this close to a battleship. Uh, but we gotta go. And the enemy DD does start shooting. We know he doesn't have a smoke. And actually, our flood does manage to kill the Ohio, which is gonna help out a lot. And you can see how us able to save our smoke for this second engagement, him opening up on us, we kind of waited for him to open up with his guns, allows us to shoot from in our smoke with our team spotting for us. I notice he drops uh, shooting and is starting to run away. And that since the Ohio is gone, I really don't have a lot to worry about here. We may as well continue pushing. But you can see how that would work in a different scenario where perhaps there's more support around. It will give you a lot of free damage in on the enemy destroyer. And that's really going to secure this flank. And with our team doing a pretty decent job on the 4-5 lines, stalling the enemy from pushing that from that other flank back to this end zone, that's, uh, that's going to give us the win, actually, in this one. So you can see it's pretty important to push in, prevent the enemy team from spotting your convoy ships, and securing that final end zone. That's kind of the keys here. And it's easier said than done, honestly. <laughs> it's pretty hard to do. Uh, but it is technically doable. But I just want to show you guys a small clip of what happens if you do manage to get up on kills as the escorting team and you manage to secure most of the path. Uh, you've got most of the map control as yours. Notice the enemy team is in our spawn at the moment and they have full control of their spawn. All the control we have as a team in this one is the end destination. And that is, cri that is very critical here <laughs> because it just allows us to sit here secondary and uh, kill these uh, Liberty ships, these escorted ships as they push in. It's hard. It's very, very hard as the escorting team. Maybe this map is not the best example, um, considering it's probably one of the most difficult for the team trying to escort the convoy ships in. This is, it's just a suicidal path, let's be honest. Who, who at the top of our <laughs> command structure designated this path for the convoy ships? Uh, very, very dangerous path to uh, send them on. And the enemy team actually almost won it here. But since we are a Schlieffen, that is going to be a lot of power in the late game here. With our secondaries, pretty decent concealment. And the torpedoes as well, you can see there. Launching them just randomly into the path of the convoy. We didn't get any hits on the convoy, but it did manage to take out the GK that was hiding in smoke. Perhaps that helped us win as well, giving us that extra advantage, not allowing him to smoke up and uh, or stay in the smoke and heal. And yeah, the smoke's not particularly useful here as they uh, push out of them right away. Maybe that'd be cool if you were able to stall them out. Maybe if they smoked up, maybe they would stop for a little bit in their smoke. That could be an idea too, updating the AI on these uh, convoy ships. But as it stands, maybe just a little bit too predictable. So again, let me know what you think in the comments down below if you guys have been winning convoy as the escorting team. I've had some troubles with it, but I have managed to do it a handful of times here. And honestly, it really is just a lot easier when you get to go out and attack the convoy trying to take them out. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.